Hey everyone, Drew here and today we are going to check out the new upcoming SSR, Water Anya. This is a definite sleep and support upgrade over the original Anya released two and a half years ago. Her speed is comparatively low for today's standards at 335, however given her skill set this is somewhat required to not make her too overpowered. But let's see if she will be anyways and let's take a look at her active skills. First up we have the Dream Weaver, a really really great basic skill if there ever is one. Gives one spirit, costs only 50 time units and it deals 500% damage if there is a sleeping enemy on the battlefield. It doesn't even have to be the target. No, one sleeping enemy is enough to deal 500% damage for just 50 time units and actually generating spirits. So this is a crazy good skill, especially considering the second condition, which is if there isn't any sleeping enemies, the damage dealt is only 50%. However, this might still be enough to finish somebody off. And additionally, it will generate more spirit. So that skill will then give three spirit. On top of that, it also ignores damage reduction effects. Looking at the next skill, Lights Out is actually why I think the speed is really necessary to not be too high of this unit because she can force two enemies to sleep. And yes, it does cost three spirit, but again, only 50 time units. And again, it basically forces half of the enemy team to sleep for 200 time units, even if they have already slept already. And if a targeted enemy does not fall asleep because of a sleep ward, for example, allies will actually gain two spirit for that. So this is also an extremely effective skill to get rid of sleep wards. Similar to Ludmilla and Clarice's forced sleep skill though, it is only usable if there are no enemies sleeping, otherwise this would be insane. Her third skill is actually the one with the longest TU, which is just 7T. And it actually costs two spirit, but what it does is pretty crazy. It detects two enemies for 600% damage, ignoring damage reduction effects, but it can only be used if she has a power charge and these power charges won't be spammed. Nevertheless, besides her dream skill set there, this is a very powerful skill, but nothing against her final skill, which might just be the very best active skill in the game potentially and you might have guessed it already that's why it deserves a full page of a skill description it is called Aegis Overload produces five spirit and is an instant skill so just one time units and affects pretty much every single unit on the battlefield all enemies are damaged 300% of Anya's attack and she heals everybody on her own team for 800% of her attack. So this is very likely a full heal for your entire team. The entire team will also become enraged. All enemies that are hit by this attack will also become weakened, which means 25% less attack on their next turn. This attack does ignore skin passive skills and counter stance status effects, of course, because otherwise this attack all skill might actually turn out to be detrimental. We are used to this ignoring right now. However, it does not ignore the stealth status effect, for example. And of course, it doesn't ignore damage reductions, although this skill is only really partially about the damage output. So the biggest weakness that I see with the skill is stealth. But even then, even if the entire enemy team is stealthed for some reason, it will still be a very valuable skill. Because she will also gain a power charge from it, which means if you recall just a minute ago, she can immediately after the skill use a demolition rate dealing another 600% damage to two enemies. So this is basically saying that when she gets the turn and gets to use Aegis Overload, she can possibly do 2400% damage to enemies within two time units. <laughs> Actually, small correction. Aegis Overload also will give her the Enrage, which means she will actually deal 900% with the Demolition Rate, which means 3000% damage potential within two time units. Let that sink in. 
Anyways, of course, there are restrictions on this skill, which is that her power barrier passive skill needs to be deactivated for her to use the skill. And it does become locked for 100 time units afterwards. This skill will then reactivate her power barrier passive skill. What is that? It is an upgrade over the auto barrier that we saw with the original Storm Anya. It does not care if there are any guardians on the field. It will be activated whenever she enters the battle. Then all of her allies will gain 35% damage reduction from attacks. And this might actually stack with other damage reduction effects, but not with other barrier type skills. Of course, this alone wouldn't be too crazy given that we already have so many units that are ignoring damage reductions. One prime example is Water Anya herself with two of her attack skills actually ignoring damage reductions. But importantly, this skill also means that she cannot be defeated by non-attack damage. This is, of course, particularly interesting against something like Poison or Burn. While the barrier is activated, she also heals for 25% of max HP whenever she takes damage from an attack but is not defeated. And if she actually gets defeated or would be defeated by an attack, the barrier will be deactivated and instead she will be purified and healed for 100% of max HP, which looks quite similar to Ludmilla and Clarice's deadly guard skill. However, to make it clear, this Anya is not a guardian and not even a temporary one, which is a first, I think, for an Anya release. After that barrier is deactivated, she will be at 100% HP again, however, she will also unlock a hold ground, which is definitely a nice touch. Of course, while the barrier is deactivated, she will be at her most vulnerable. But if she gets a turn during that time, she will immediately use the Aegis Overload. And that was just her first passive. Her second passive also has a full page of skill description. Like all the recent sleep units, she is a nightmare unit which means she will not wake up sleeping enemies with any of her attacks, which is important because of her attack all skill, of course. And then we will see something quite unique from her, because the adaptive circuit also means that whenever another non-conjured ally enters the battlefield from reinforcements, she has a chance for one of the following effects to trigger based on the element of the unit that is entering, Again, this is a scaling skill, so if you have her fully awakened, then the chance is actually 100%. If a water unit enters, one random non-sleeping enemy will be forced to sleep for 200 time units. If a fire unit enters, this will actually grant burn to all enemies. So we'll need to be very careful here, because I think this will actually wake up sleeping targets, which means it is really questionable whether you want to use fire units while you run Water Anya somewhere close. However, of course, you could argue that it is a nice transition effect into your burn platoon. If an earth unit enters, one random non-sleeping enemy will actually be granted the cursed sleep for 200 time units. Of course, like all cursed sleep, this could be blocked by the burn status effect. If a storm unit enters, a random enemy will be stunned for 150 time units. Very nice as well. If a dark unit enters, one random non-sleeping enemy will be mega poisoned for 200 time units. And one thing important at this point is I think that all of these effects could potentially stack with some of the other effects that the units themselves entering have. For example, if Dark Rainer enters, I think two enemy units will actually be mega poisoned if there are enough non-sleeping enemies. And then finally, if a light unit enters, all allies will be purified and healed for 400% of Anya's attack. Really nice reset button right there. So all in all, my first impression is that she is an extremely good unit, especially for sleep teams, of course. Might have some interaction effects with her passive that need to be considered while team building. Her hate levels will, of course, influence how well she does, but in general she does seem to have very very good survivability against any team type, except for one big exception, and that is Storm Teams, 
because the big weakness that you can see in her skill set is stun. She needs to get a turn to use her Aegis overload skill and reset her power barrier and ensure her survivability. Without stun, this unit looks very hard to kill actually because she has such low time units, which means whenever her power barrier does go down, she is likely to have another turn very soon afterwards and then restart the cycle. Very important here, of course, is the purification that she gets when her power barrier goes down, which means that sleep units will also have a hard time dealing with her. In general, many units will have trouble dealing with her, of course, because of the support side of her skill set with all the kind of purification going on, especially with the Aegis Overload skill, but also with potentially other units entering from the reinforcements. And that is all besides her possibly insane damage output. But more on that and her AI analysis in my upcoming deep dive video on her. So stay tuned. Also going to show you top arena level footage from this new SSR as soon as possible, as usual. So don't forget to like and subscribe to become a true carrot. And as always, thanks for watching.